Wait, we actually might finish this in like four hours. <laughs> All right, this level teaches you about cape and spin fly mechanics. The fundamental aspect behind the cape is takeoff meter. Takeoff meter determines whether you can continue ascending or begin flight. It also determines when the screen starts to scroll upwards. Takeoff meter is set to 80. Once your P meter is filled completely, when you jump. So basically when you have P meter when you jump. Takeoff meter decreases by one every frame and does not reset if it is active above zero. So that's basically telling you every time you jump with P speed, it doesn't get set back to 80. It'll only get set back when it reaches zero and you jump with P speed. So we're gonna do that right now. See, takeoff meter gets set to 80. But if we jump twice, right? It doesn't reset. So it only resets when it gets back to zero. So the, sim the spin fly press A to jump. So this is a spin fly. Whee! After the initial jump, an internal timer gets set to 16 and decreases by one every frame. While this timer is active, you ascend at max speed regardless if you are holding A or not. When this timer reaches zero, you start to decelerate. The timer can be reset once it reaches zero, and if A is pressed, this is why you may continue to send even after letting go A. So yeah, a lot of people, when they do the cape right, they'd be like, why am I going so high? I let go, I let go of jump like a year ago. Oh, I'm gonna put this place off. So yeah, you basically ascend, the way you can look at it is you ascend at 16 frame intervals. So when you press the spin jump button, you can see I go up for 16 frames. It doesn't matter how long you, you hold it. You can tap it, or you can hold it. See, I'm gonna tap A, and I only go at a certain height. But if I hold A, I still go that same height. Because of that cape timer, it's active. It's, it's pretty janky. Takeoff meter can be set back to zero only if you are on the ground or if you begin normal flying. Otherwise, it stays at two. You can continue to ascend only if your takeoff meter is going to two. Wait, did I say the same time I supplied the... If your takeoff meter is two or less, this same timer is then applied for descent. When this timer is active, you will fall at minimum speed. So I can see this this timer, right? Even after I let go of jump, I'm still not falling down. That's why if you ever play Grand Portal 2 and you're in that falling section, you might like fall down when you least expect it, and it's because of this timer. You can only fall at 16 frame intervals. See, I'll give the bird example, right? You can see I'm falling like really slow for a bit. So boop, boop, boop. It's because of this timer, which you can't really control. It's kind of stupid, but. Also, you can see my takeoff meter. It stays at two when I'm in the air. Until I touch the ground, it doesn't reset. Touch the ground, it resets. So there's also one other thing. There's also one more thing I forgot to mention, is that if you do a frame-perfect jump, it actually doesn't reset. So let me try and do that really quickly. Oh, that time I messed up. If I jump at the right time, it doesn't reset. You can see right there. This is what people refer to as a firsty. Yo, what's up, BK? So yeah, if you're, if you're, if you're too perfect, you get cucked sometimes, like that. Prevents you from taking off twice in a row. Yeah, but take off and get really high, yeah. Because you can go into a regular, like, cape phase, but it doesn't reset until you touch the ground for two, two more frames.
Okay, is there anything else I need to explain? Well, you get to know about normal normal um, flight later, but yeah, so if if you're in normal flight, then takeoff meter gets to zero when you're near. But if you're in spin flight, it'll stay at two. So. Hold A to constantly ascend. Release A to descend. Tap A to ascend a short height that supplies you even if you are falling. You can also do spin flying inputs while holding on a mirror to maintain P meter. So you can use X and A or you can use Y and B, it doesn't matter, but the controls are the same for holding an item. No, I'm bad. I think we get into more cave stuff in the normal flight. This one's pretty short and pretty straightforward. But once you get to uh, this one, the next one, serious stuff goes down. We're gonna be talking about we're gonna be talking about a lot of things. Peg jump. All right, no more flight. This level is really long, actually. There's like 20 rooms or something. So this level will teach you about normal flight mechanics. To normal fly, press B jump, to jump when your PM is completely filled. The max B when flying varies from 57, 47 to 51. You begin normal flight once you start falling downwards while holding it Y. Once this happens, your P meter decreases. So yeah, if you're constantly ascending, you don't you don't go into cape form. It's not it's only until you start moving downwards that you go into cape form. Spin flight double jumps? Wait, there is what do you mean by spin flight double jumps? When you are flying, your speed increases by four every frame. So you accelerate much faster than running. Remember that letting go of right when in the air locks your speed. So yeah. However, once it gets to the 47 to 51, it does not decrease increase by four. So let me show you real quick. So it's four right now. I'm gonna tap right. I'm gonna try to tap right for one frame. Okay, I tap right for two frames. But yeah, you can see it increases by four if I tap correctly. If you hold right and fly downwards fast enough, you can do a dive bomb. When you land on the ground, you can kill some enemies. No, a dive bomb requires flight phase six. So, flight phases. There are a total of six, or I guess seven if you go zero to six. So flight zero is when you're not flying. Flight one is when you go into the cape form for the first time. Two is like, Kind of like the, the little bobble. So f this is Flay Animation 1. 2 is like the little bobble, and then 3 is just the normal one. I started to 7 press A, start going back again. Oh yeah, I mean, there is no wrong time to press A. That one's controlled because... Um, you ascend... Whenever, whatever... Uh, it's hard to explain. But yeah, you just ascend whenever you're falling down, so... The only time you don't ascend is when that cape timer is active, which you can't see right now, but... The timing is pretty lenient for downwards. So yeah, so... Again, flight phases, they go from 0 to 6. And... It, like, increases by, like... It's like every, I don't know, every couple frames. It goes from 3 to 4 to 5 to 6. So you can kind of see it's a little slow. You can actually go faster if you if you tap right, you can make it go faster. But it's not really applicable for most kinds of hacks. So Again, you go to flight phase once one once you start falling downwards. No, you can dive bomb slightly faster if you repeatedly tap yeah, so. Just know you can do that. It's really not applicable. To pull up from a dive bomb, hold left. If you get a low key pump, you held left too early. You did not no, you do not need to hold B. So, here's an example of me pulling up too late, or too early. So you actually want... 
I think you actually want your your flight face to be six for more than one frame. I'm trying to get it at the right time, but you can see it's not even getting to six. It's getting up to five, and then it doesn't get the K pump. So you need it to be six. So in that case, it's six. So once you reach six, you're good to go. So that's a little timing thing. You can kind of see the animation. So that's it's that animation. So that's when once you get that animation, you know that you have a flight in phase six. Whoops. If you pull up close enough to a ceiling, you can stick to it. This is known as a sticky fly. If you pull up too early, you will bonk into the wall. If you pull up too late, you will not stick to the ceiling. There is no frame window. There is no frame window because it depends on a couple of different factors. Such as like your flight phase, how much air you have, if you have any air, what cape phase you're in, there's a lot of variables, but for that setup, it's probably like a couple frames. To do normal cape pumps, tap left for at least 10 frames. As you are falling, you can gain height. You can actually gain height if you time your taps correctly. If you tap left too early, you will not pump and you will slowly fall instead. A dive pump requires fate, flight phase three. So that's what happens. So this is what happens if you do it too early. You do like the little. I like to call it the head bob. So again, you just need at least a flight phase three. <laughs> Lots of pumps, dude. Gosh, you'd be. The slow on flight tap left plus B. This decreases your speed by six per tap. You can only keep pump if your speed is greater than zero. So yeah, let's make our speed zero really quickly, right? So it's zero right now. And you notice that I can't keep up. So it has to be at least one or negative one, depending on which direction you're going. So our speed is 11 right now. So if I do a tap left, it goes to five. And then if I do one more, it's gonna go negative one. So if you wanna repeatedly slow down, you have to keep tapping B actually. Because if you hold B and left, it doesn't do anything. You have to keep tapping B. And again, you can hold right to, to uh, speed up. So remember, you decelerate, or you slow down fast and you speed up. So it decreases by six every tap, and you increase your speed by four when you hold right. You can bounce, you can get a higher bounce off an enemy if you're holding B while in flight state. So yeah, this is what happens if I hold B. And if I don't hold B. It's like a little, no it's like a little noticeable, but you can see I can barely clear the munchers. See, I get a little higher that time, I get like block higher. You can also exit flight state at any time by letting go of Y. The best time to let go of Y is when you are ascending. If you let go of Y while descending, it sometimes takes longer to exit the flight state. Uh, exclamation point, kindergarten. So, right, let's do it if I'm descending. I let go of Y. You can actually see I do a cape bump. So, again, we're going to do it while I'm descending. So, doing it as I'm descending, I actually do a cape bump. So if I do it when I'm ascending though, I let go, or I get out of flight phase immediately. Another thing you can do while, while we're on this topic is you can actually get back in the cape phase if you um, repress Y anytime you're off the ground and your takeoff meter is greater than two. We'll get into that later, but for example, right, see? I'm gonna go a little higher and I'm gonna not be in Kate phase. Oh, that was bad. So my takeoff meter was greater than two when I pressed Y again and you can get back to Kate phase. So here we're gonna let go of Y as I'm falling upwards and boom, easy peasy. When you're in flight state, you are immune to damage if you are not touching the ground. So by not touching the ground, I mean like this. See how you like cape slide? When you're in that cape slide, you can take damage and 
get small. If you run into an enemy, you will exit flight state and be invulnerable for 48 frames. So we look at this invulnerability, invincibility timer and boom, 48. When you run into an enemy, you also spin, switch to a spin drum state, so. That's like vanilla motor skills, I guess. A vanilla motor skills mechanic. You can maintain flight state if you grab a vine during the state. You can also take damage while grabbing the vine. No, you will fly in the direction that your lowered hand is on. So yeah, so in this case, I'm going to go to the right. Because... Mario's right hand is lower and his left hand's higher. In this case, Mario's left hand's lower and his right hand's higher. So he's going right, he's going left, and he's going right here. He's going left here, right here. You can kind of see the little white outline. That's his lower hand. So the good news is you always get kind of a high jump out of this. And you can kind of see in the direction, right? One's right, left is zero. And you can see that. Whoops, I guess that works. So yeah, you can take damage, and you will still be able to climb the vine, so. Yeah, that's what decides it. Sometimes you need to start flying slowly immediately after takeoff. During takeoff, you want to be as close to zero speed as by using small left-right taps. So this is why left-rights are very important early on, because you use them in everything. Right before entering flight state, make sure to tap right so you are facing right when you begin flying. So if you don't do that, this is what's going to happen. You're going to face left. So to make sure you face right is you tap right. Just right before you bonk. You're going to tap right. Bonk. So this is also similar to when you climb the vine, right? You want to throw the item up. You want to get as close to zero speed as possible. So you'll be able to get an idea of how to do that once you get enough flying. So you can see my speed's like five, so as long as you're slow enough, it doesn't have to be too super slow. You can always slow down by tapping B. So remember, tapping B to slow down, hold right to speed, speed up, baby stuff. You can fly with an item if you run into it while in flight state, the controls are the same. So flight state, remember, that is when your flight phase is greater than one. Because if you're not in flight phase one, you're in this phase, that's not flight phase. That's like takeoff phase. I guess I should have specified that. So once you're in that phase, you can now grab the item. But if you try to do it this way, you can't fly. See how my flight phase is still zero? So now if we go into it, my flight phase is the same. All right, so for this one, what you want to do is you want to hold B after you drop the item like that and you want to drop the item when you are moving upwards so let's try that again you can pre-hold jump if you want oh I messed up right there but keep in mind if you do pre-hold jump you might slow down a little so Money. adjust accordingly so I can pre-hold right here and cool, this whole jump and let go. Yo, so I'm gonna think with the fourteen dollars. Appreciate that. Unlike P meter, you maintain takeoff meter through pipes or doors. This means you can enter flight state without building P meter as long as you're falling down while airborne and takeoff meter is greater than two. Samaria. So again, P meter does not persist through pipes and doors, but takeoff meter does. So we're going to enter this pipe with like 60 takeoff, not 70. So you can see that 70 is still there, and we keep it. And since we aren't spin jumping anymore, we go immediately into a flight phase. So, Well, when you exit, if you're in the air when you exit. Yo, dumb thing, you've seven months, and welcome back. Key meter stored in the balls. No, spin fly, then enter the door. So people, I was watching Tofu have trouble with this, so I did add this note and or was it glitch cat? I was one of two. And you don't have to be in the flight phase when you enter the door. You can if you want to, but it's easiest if you spin fly because you can just enter the door. 
So you notice how my takeoff meter was like 40 or something? So remember, you don't enter flight phase until you start descending. So actually, when you're on ground, you have to jump and then start falling. Or you can bonk on the ceiling because that'll make you fall immediately. So you need, realistically, you need at least like 20 something takeoff meter if you're starting from the ground. Because that'll give you enough time to start descending when you jump. So right now that's 30, that should be enough. Yeah, see? And now you can just fly across. And that's that's all that's all the cape physics. The cape physics are a lot to explain, my dudes. Swimming mechanics. Isn't it great that I make you do swimming stuff? The the <laughs> the level before the last one. Whoops. This all teaches you about my water mechanics. The max speed when swimming varies from 15 to 17. Holding Y does not affect your speed, so if you're holding Y, you don't go any faster or slower. So water levels, you can give your thumb a little break and only need to tap the B button or the A button. B and A do the same thing, I forgot to mention that. Letting go of right will slow you down one per frame so you can see that. Any big frogs? To swim upwards, press B. Note, the amount you swim upwards varies depending on faster you're descending. Yeah, see, look, if you do a jump from the ground, it gives 22, I think? It's like 22. Yeah, see, it's negative 24. So, if you can see, the faster I'm moving down, it actually doesn't start at 24, it starts at lower values, so... That's why it means by that. Oh, I'm bad. <laughs> That's why if you want to get consistent height when you are falling down, I like to do two taps. So yeah. <laughs> My throat is actually dying. <laughs> I'm talking so much. I didn't expect it to be like this. To swim lower, hold down. This lets you cross a minimum of eight gaps. Minimum of two top gaps. Paul Yata's rip. To swim higher, hold up. You can also cancel your upwards momentum by pressing down. So yeah. This is where you need to do your downward momentum right there. So pressing down will slow you down pretty fast, so it's a little lenient. Yeah, remember when, when I said um, you have a speed of negative 24 when you jump? See, look at here, I do it here, it doesn't even get the negatives. So if you want to be consistent, you can do two jump taps. Same with down. So if I want to consistently do that, I do two down taps to make it easier. Get good at get good at determining which swim height you need. Because you don't always want to press down, right? This is taking way too long. This is where you yep, you uh, need to get good at canceling momentum when you need to. If you're going to go too high, so like right here, too high, press down. Too high, press down. Too high, press down. So this is where I explained that you do the uh, the two tab. So you may you may need to tap B more than once. So I do it. I do the double tab. You can hold down if you want to. Does not make you fall faster, but I pre-hold it so it prepares me for the cancel momentum if I need to. So be like, oh, there's Motris there, gotta pre-press down. The max speed when swimming with an item varies from 31 to 33. While holding an item, you are constantly swimming upwards and in the direction you're facing. So you can see, I'm always moving. Unlike when I don't hold an item, I don't move at all. But with an item, you do. So apparently, your minimum speed when holding items is actually 15 to 17. I didn't know that. So yeah. You can only pass through one tile gas while holding item. Technically not true. You can do it. But you have to you have to literally press A and B every other frame. 
So it's basically task only. So uh, good luck doing that. Since you're always moving while holding an item, tap left to right to make small adjustments. We're going back to the left right, boys. I'm telling you, left rights are important. Swim upwards faster. Throw the item upwards, then press B to swim upwards. Be careful not to swim too early, otherwise you will pass through the item without grabbing it. Remember, that's because of the uh, interacting with items frame rule. 17 to 18 frames. No, you throw items with less distance than water. So yeah, they, they don't go anywhere. Look at that. It's not going anywhere. Well, it still goes pretty far though, but not as far as it could. You could throw the P-switch up, but, I mean, it's harder. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's not harder. It does more inputs, so it doesn't really matter. See, that's what happens if you start swimming too early. So what I like to do is wait about, like, half a second and then start swimming upwards. Or I like to do one jump input. Yeah, one like, one jump input. You don't really need to do the item throws up too much unless you need to be like some type of timer. Now we're swimming slower while holding an item. No, you fall faster than items while in water. So yeah, your speed is 16, I guess. And your max speed went upwards is six, negative 16. Interesting. Then I press up or down to avoid grabbing vines. Hold right to use your momentum to pass through them. Okay, so. This is kind of hard to explain, but the way I do it is... See how you're going upwards for a brief time? You only need to press down on the jump. So what you can do is after you press the jump button, you can let go of down. And that's one way to pass the vine. Oops. Let me try that again. It's hard to explain. See? Once I once I do the jump button, I just start holding right and let go of down. So that's one way you can do it. The other way you can do it is the opposite, where you jump, then hold down. So you can do like that. So from the top, you can start holding down. Whichever way, it doesn't really matter. Kind of, we might have to use both ways depending on how you were positioned right before you go to the vine. So for example, do the down one, let go, down one, let go. This one you can just go neutral. This one I have to do from above. So I guess for this part, you need to just get good at isolating down and the right. If you look at my input display, you're good at doing this. Just get good. Sub GG prog. Alright boys, we're on to the final exam. We're gonna finish this in under four hours, wow. This is actually going by faster than I expected it to. The final exam won't guess. Won't guess, boys. So this is the last level in the hack. It's gonna body you. This will body you. But that's all Kaizu. Kaizu's not meant to be easy. So the final exam is everything. There's seven rooms. I thought about making ten rooms, but I gave up. So I only made seven. There's no boss, by the way. Monka W. So, we'll try to walk through this. Uh, is this like the double jump level? Okay, so. I guess I'll just do it. I don't know if I can explain it while I talk. Explain why I do it. That part's a little tight. You just need to not be too far to the left, and you you just don't want to you just don't want to um, spawn the thwomp again. So 
then you're fine. Just don't be too far to the right. Or left, sorry. You'll be good. Alright, so this is a very... So a level very similar to uh, the Grand Pearl 2 flight level. But I believe with your knowledge, yeah, you can do this too. Don't be afraid to go too slow. There's nothing wrong with going too slow. Although sometimes you do have to speed up to beat the... Uh... You can also just go over the... Uh... You can fly over that, but if you want, you can also use the... Um, what was I going to say? Frame perfect tricks? There's actually... No frame perfect tricks... In the final exam, I think. The only frame perfect trick you need to worry about is the throw block grab. Which actually isn't bad, because you can control when you do it. Double Kaizo <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, there's only trolls in the in the in the test levels. Underwater fishing move. This one underwater fishing move is very lenient. Very lenient. I'm give you a lot of space and it's not too long. More left rights. Oh, I'm bad. Left right, right there. A little left right here. Don't need a left right there. But there's a coin block there. But I don't know if you can even hit it. I made it like super not easy to hit. No, there's no boss. How did I do what? Alright, time for the multicultural show, boys. You guys like that? I ducked the music. Well, kind of. So there's the initial disco shell mount. So you can actually do this two ways. You can either use the shell and do a shell jump, or you can use a chuck. I give you, I give you options, boys. So again, I've watched people do this the hard way, and I try to help you with the arrow. But you want to do this all in one motion, because if you try to do it in two motions, it, everything's hard. Or you want, you don't want to do the drop. You just want to do the up throw, and it's free. So that's the only frame, only frame perfect trick right there, just that block grab, but you can control it, so it's pretty, pretty free. I might be dead. So there's an example of using a visual cue. I'm dead. So my visual cue is I start moving a little before the Koopa gets to the block, and if I need to do a left right, I'll do it. Sahi box! Who's gonna claim it? I don't know, but I need to add more screenshots. I forgot about screenshots, and I gotta add those. I might be dead. I'm alive. So that one's kind of teaching you the, the high bounce, the low high bounce. 
so you can kind of see where all these mechanics are coming into play. Oh, I, I pressed the wrong button because I'm bad. Maybe Eldad. Because Dode's playtested this. Nexus has playtested this. Eldad has not. So maybe Eldad can moderate it. So there's the spin jumping off a of falling enemies trick. And then you get presented with the credits. But it's not over yet. It's not over yet. It's still the special world. And there's also Pog Yu pointing at there yet either. Thank you for giving Yo, it's Fitzy community. here. Fitzy, I'm praying you get rank one. Also, thanks for 100 bits. Where's that? How to incorporate with other players to put together a PDF of an invisible maze? <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> Pog you. What are the major differences between moderator, moderation and playtest? Well, you moderate when the hack's ready to be submitted and, like, finished. Playtesting is like, you give people the hack and it's like, Hey, you need to fix this, or I think you should add this. Yo, special thanks, look at that. Twitch chat's there. If you're here in chat, you get a thanks from me. Oh yeah, so we're the playtesters. We have we had a picture of the faces. We had Dode. And there's Glitch Cat. I'm amazed at how some <laughs> Nexus chose not to show his face. I did ask Nexus if he wanted his face to be next, so he gets a weird shame. Tofu. I just used their emotes, so. New Mario. Dude, Mario's picture is like so clear compared to everyone else. I'm actually impressed with the quality. And there's me. Dude, look at my lips. They're so pixely. Wait for it, wait for it. Dude, Pog you! Can we get some Pog in the chat? <laughs> 